And this month's Where Did the Road Go is sponsored by Super Inframan, Allison Cook, and Eric Hervin. Thank you all so very much for your incredible support. Transmission start. Welcome to Where Did the Road Go? Join us as we wander off the path and explore lost history, consciousness, the paranormal, unexplained mysteries, alternative thought, and much more. We are present on the web at wheredidtheroadgo.com. Now here is your host, Soraya. Welcome to this edition of Where Did the Road Go? Tonight in studio here with me, I have uh, Peter Canellis. Hi, Peter. Hey, how's, how's going, everybody? And Lorna. Hi. Reynolds. <laughs> Reynolds is your last name, right? Yep. Okay. Oh, good. yeah. And uh, you've both been on the show before. You've been live in studio at WBBR before. We uh-huh. have. Yep. Peter, you actually came up for the last exit before I started Where the Road Go. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, realize that. Yeah, you and your sister. Sister, yep. Yeah, my sister, Patty, yep. Remember my co-host, Eric? It was around Halloween. My co-host, Eric, had all the face paint and everything. I remember. <laughs> that was a fun time. <laughs> that was good times. Um, and that helped me actually get more accustomed to doing those type of shows so I could do this. Oh, cool. And uh, Lorna, awesome. you did a psychic fair you included me on. Yes. And... Okay. I was nervous about doing it because I hadn't done any public speaking yet. And I was like, I don't know. And then you're like, it'll be a round table. And I said, well, that's better. And then I said, I have to do it. I'm going to meet two people that are going to be important. And I met Luke. Yeah. Who was working with uh, with you, Peter. Ithaca College, right? Yeah. Ithaca and College. Yeah. my co-host until he left Ithaca and let me do stuff with the show I couldn't do by myself. Okay. And I met Nathan, who is running sound, who is now my sound guy for the last exit for the lost. Uh huh. Wow. Okay. Excellent. And I was That's like, cool. there we go. All right. Two people. Yeah. <laughs> and those are two people. <laughs> and it was very obvious <clears throat> those were my two people because Nathan came up with you after the after the, uh, the 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 psychic fair. Yeah. And he didn't say a word. No. And I added him, and I went, I really want this guy back on the show. I just feel like he should be on the show. And I just put out a general thing on Facebook. Anyone want to come to the show this week? And he's like, I do. I'm like, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And I had no idea. He, was, he wasn't He was that good of a sound guy at the time. He was okay. Mm-hmm. And now he has honed his skills to the point where he is a phenomenal sound guy because he's worked with all these bands that we've had up. That's yeah. great. So, yeah. Nate, that's, Nate is awesome. That is how things work. <laughs> Uh-huh. It's yeah. weird. Becca, Becca actually came over a couple of times with Nate. And yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh-huh. So, uh, Peter, you have your book. I do. Go Surreal. Go Surreal. I'll probably put a close-up of that on the <laughs> screen for anyone yeah. watching on YouTube. There you go. And when did the Proof of the Paranormal, when did this come out? Uh, a couple years ago. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because we hadn't talked in a while. No, yeah, it's been a while. And I was like, I wonder if Peter ever published his book. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't do too much with it. I just kind of put it out, just kind of see what happened. But it goes way back to my grandmother and growing up with it. Right, right. How it it involved. And I knew a lot of it from talking to you, from you being on the show. Right. And it's, uh, I mean, it's a decent length book, but it's an easy read. It's an easy read, yep. So I did did make notes. Good. Good. (laughs) It's been a couple of weeks since I've read it now, uh, because we've had to reschedule this a couple of times. Yep. And so let me find my notes. And Lorna, are you working on a book as well? No. Uh, oh, okay. Actually, Peter Peter and I did a, just got through. Just before COVID, I had started a whole uh, research on hypnosis and, oh, and okay. time. And we did, I did, oh my God, 60-something people. We recorded a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And, and you moved them both forward and backwards. Yes. Okay, I always find that interesting. Uh huh. So I, now it was very, it was phenomenal. It's it was one of those phenomenal. things where I'm suspicious of hypnosis, mm-hmm. as far as memory recall goes. But I'm also fascinated by the idea that we can move someone forwards. Oh, it was it was unbelievable. Well, the whole thing is, is with time. Time really doesn't exist. Right. This came from me teaching a class, and I was like, okay, so how do I explain to them time doesn't exist? And I was like, and the whole thing, if, if I can take you back through time, and it really doesn't exist, then why can't we move forward? Yeah. So it was phenomenal. And then what we started capturing, 
was even more phenomenal as we moved forward mm -hmm. into March, because actually March six. 16th when they shut everything down right i actually had what 20 something people scheduled that day yeah oh okay. so we had shut all of that down everything got shut yeah shut down and that was that was the end of the research which i'm opening everything back up again now so right, right. yeah and this area didn't get hit super hard anyway luckily but no. i think that's because we weren't packed in you know it seemed to be viral load based mm-hmm Absolutely. But absolutely. When you went in the future, we got like COVID related stuff that they were seeing with the the air tubes around them, the tubes coming out, and then we heard the machines. Oh, it, yeah. It oh, sounded yeah. like the machines. I'm like, we didn't know yeah. it at the time that COVID and, was going to hit. And the whole thing is, is when we were listening to it, and I was like, going, what the heck is that sound? Did, did they get them? Were they abducted? Right. Now, because, you, and it wasn't could, just. You could hear the sound? You yes. Could, on the on the recording, I'm actually um, as a hypnotist, I don't know why or why this happens, but for some reason, I am the only one documented for this to happen to. Even going back through past lives, uh -huh. the sounds of where my clients go come out on tape. That's interesting. So it's almost like when I'm doing the hypnosis, I'm there, but I'm not there. It's bizarre. Huh. And it's all the sounds come out. And Peter, you matched it to a ventilator? It sounded like a ventilator. Yeah, because you hear the... I'm like, that sounds like a machine. And then I'm like, when we, COVID came up and he, then... The, and then Peter calls me up and he says, oh my God. <laughs> it's got to be a ventilator because you could hear it yeah. plain as day. And I had my digital recorder... And sounds were coming through when we went in the past lives that what they were talking about. It was just crazy. Huh. Mm -hmm. You could hear it clear as day. That's awesome. Uh, do you have stuff up anywhere? No, I don't really. I didn't put any of them up. Well, actually, what we were doing all of this for before we even realized what we were getting into with what was happening, uh, it was put. To, we were putting this together for a book. Yeah, I oh, okay. And I started writing it. I just okay, maybe that's it. why I thought you were working on a book. I knew you were yeah. working on another one, but you're yeah. working on it together, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's going to be about Lorna doing her past lives and the future because future events comes up that hasn't happened yet that came to us and they're watching it happen. Right. right. Buildings like buildings burning down that pretty you know they're major events because it's going to happen that haven't happened yet. So I feel like there's certain ele certain things in in our reality that are set yeah absolutely like 9 11 was going to happen no matter what like that was saying that needed to happen for whatever reason right as, as awful as that sounds i think you know there's a lot of play i feel like in our destiny but there's certain like big rocks dropped in the river you can't mm -hmm. change them yeah you can't get, get mm -hmm. go, go around exactly them. exactly i mean that can, it went to aliens living on other planets I mean, people were seeing like crazy events, mm -hmm. yeah. so it was like wow. And, well, and actually, at there it. were there was the the one lady that was up that her and her family had gone into the mountains, and they they were actually able to see like all these explosions. But the explosions weren't; it wasn't coming down from the sky. It was actually coming up and out of the ground. Huh. And the way that they explained it, it was like spears of light, and then just everything just kind of just, and it was constant. It was like, like lasers. all night thing, almost like a laser. She, I think she mentioned lasers. It almost mm. looks like lasers, laser beams. Very different technology than what we know right now. Or no, we have. That we don't even know, yeah. <laughs> actually, I had talked to someone in, in that was retired military, and I actually described it to him. Yeah. And he says, oh, my God. He says, how the hell do you know that? <laughs> so that confirmed to me that he already knew. He knew, yeah. What I was talking right. about. So yeah, I just uh, the, it's very very interesting. The um, the interesting thing about like say the remote viewing, you get some uh, like Ingo Swan and them doing some of this stuff where they're seeing stuff on the other side of the moon, but mm -hmm. we can't verify it. But right. when they when they can get verification of their targets, their accuracy is incredible. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And I wonder, because these people were going to experience this stuff in their lifetime, like the, the COVID stuff, right. that that made, I mean, it's something not only we can verify, but it was in their own lifetime that they were just picking up on that in the future, because now they're in an altered state with hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it can be verified. So once you get, because the information moves both ways. Exactly. Exactly. And like I said, it was... It was just fluke, you know, I was just uh, doing my thing. and. <laughs> have you ever had anyone in between lives? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. But I know people have tried that before as well. I, no, I, I've had people, because uh, I don't direct them. I allow them, to, I'll, I'll have them start turning back the calendar, and then I'll have whenever they're ready to stop. So I don't tell them when to stop. Right. I'll say when you're ready to stop, you know, get raise your finger and you know, they'll stop you know, they'll stop where they choose to stop. Right. So right. now I've had them actually almost like stuck out into the dimensions of time. Hmm. So for them to and and either they'll have just not like darkness around them, it'll be cold, uh, they'll start seeing colors, you know. Uh, or they'll just start describing colors, or some of them will just hang out in that darkness, and then I'll go, okay, we're going to go ahead and move it up. I've they've I've had them come experience the whole being born. Hmm. It 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 sounds like the Tibetan Book of the Dead type of stuff. Mm hmm. But these are actual <laughs> hypnosis right, sessions. Right. Right. What was what was curious to me? I actually interviewed or talked to him beforehand. And one guy was, um, well, I knew the guy, too. He was a farmer. Always wanted to farm. His dad farmed. So when Lorna had put him under to do the past lives, he was a farmer in each past life. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty fascinating. Different types as he went, you know, soybean, corn, different as a, his lives went. And a boat. Four. So he, had a kept, he kept having a dream. He told me before he went in hypnosis that he's falling out of a ship. And then he wakes up before he hits the deck. In his past life, he was working as a ship hand, and he fell out of the hmm. out of the very top of the mast into the ship, and that's what killed him. So, but the he, reoccurring dreams these people were having, and that was one of his dreams. So it was pretty fascinating that people were having these dreams and it connected to their past lives. Yeah. Well, that I mean that makes sense. It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I met a little grandson cool. the other day. He was like. Grandma, I crushed my head. I says, what do you mean you crushed your head? <laughs> I crushed my head. And I'm like, going, really? When did you crush your head? Oh, a long time ago. And then he just goes walk off. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, see, to me, like, hypnosis has, has issues. And, uh, you know, you, you like it. You think it works well. But, I mean, there are. Oh. There are, there are issues with how accurate it is at recovering lost memories. Mm -hmm. More, I, I focus more on the fact that like the abduction accounts have been handled horribly. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and stuff like that. But when you have a kid not under hypnosis, mm -hmm. that can give you stuff a kid should not know. Exactly. Right. And lots of kids can do this. That is exactly. just so compelling. Exactly. I think it goes with kids knowing how to play the piano. They're four or five years yeah. old. How yeah. do they know that? They shouldn't know how to. Oh. They just shouldn't know this stuff. And a lot of them lose it after a few years. And That's true. And that can be cultural, too, because we don't encourage it. That's true. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's because of the fact that it's not followed through with. Because yeah. adults yeah. will ignore it, you know. Yeah. Oh, what a vivid imagination. Exactly. 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 I, I mean, I, I had a son that could pick up any instrument from baby on up. And within 10 minutes would be playing it. And he's actually a musician today. So nice, nice. <laughs> makes sense. What, what 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 do you think hypnosis actually does? It is for me. Okay, you got to remember too. I also have a degree in clinical hypnosis, which okay. falls into the whole medical category. Yep. Okay. Uh it can rewire everything. Yeah. Yeah, it works uh, it incredibly get, well for behavioral modification. Exactly, exactly. It works great for pain management. Right. Uh, I could, back in the olden days, when they didn't have, like, uh, pain medications, things to that extent, hypnosis was used strongly for medical. Hmm. 
hmm. for amputation of limbs and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. So it was used out in the battlefields, uh, things to that extent. Remember uh, Harvey, what's his name? Paul Harvey. Oh, yeah. Paul yeah. Harvey. From the radio station. Yep. And I think my, he was a teenager when he came out with this. And I was going down the road, and all of a sudden Paul Harvey comes on. He says, could you just imagine? He says that medics won't be needed out in the battlefield because soldiers would be able to heal themselves. Hmm. And now that's the rest of the story. <laughs> and what he was talking about was hypnosis. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So... It's phenomenal. I did a, uh, I volunteered myself for a project with the Tennessee uh, Social Services Office. Mm -hmm. And I had 28 people because they were required in order to get certain things from the Social Services Office that they had to take these classes. And right, I had to laugh right. because actually one of my clients was like, she was so stressed out. They they had a woman in that did stress balloons. And she says, oh, my God, Miss Lorna, you've got to go up and volunteer. She says, I, you've got to put me under hypnosis. I'm so stressed out for making the stress <laughs> no. balloon and this woman. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so I went up and I volunteered my time. And out of 28 people, 26 people completely, everything that was going on with their lives Oh, no. They totally moved forward. Actually, four of them actually became social workers. Wow. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah that's cool. And the, I mean, that's a pretty good track record. Yeah. But I had to laugh because none of them knew that I was a psychic medium. Right, right. Because then so they would have taken you as seriously, probably. Exactly. So when they were yeah. filling out their paperwork, I had the last page was draw a tree. Mm-hmm. And they were like, draw a tree? What do I got to draw a tree for? Mm -hmm. So, and when I was going over their paperwork, I was able to take that tree and tell them everything about themselves and what they had gone through and what they had endured. And so, so nice. therefore, I caught their attention. Gotcha, gotcha. And then, you know, I picked up people that def definitely did have pain issues, things to that extent. I did hypnosis with them. And uh, like I said, they all succeeded. But does... And I'm going to get into this on a on a on a social level in 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 our lives and, and the way everything is set up. Our country functions off of dysfunction. True. So yeah, when I okay. started this class and they were all sitting there with just doom and gloom on their face that they had to sit there, I went, "What are you all looking so down in the dumps about? Do you know how much money you're worth?" I had to do the statistics on this. And then I had all these ladies that actually worked in the offices standing on the back wall. And I said, ladies, I says, you know, I says, don't you have work in your office to do? I says, I volunteered my time to help these people out. I says, and you can afford to pay me, so you can please leave the room. And they were all like, oh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I was like, and then I went on to tell them how much they were actually worth, you know? Huh. And, 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 in our system. Yeah. And I was like, come on. I says, aren't you tired of making sure that they've got everything that they need, you know? Yeah. Let's make yeah. the, let's turn this around, you know? And that caught them right there, you mm -hmm. know? Because now so, they felt it might be worth it. Exactly. Exactly. And that they were worth it. Yeah. They were yeah. worth doing yeah. this for themselves. Hmm. So, and I would always do like a light hypnosis before I would start the classes and... Nice. Yeah, so it, it was definitely, it was, it was amazing on how well it worked. So hypnosis is, <clears throat> I'm very, very careful with it. Uh, I can actually hypnotize someone without them realizing that they're being hypnotized. Yeah, I've seen people do uh, that before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a friend of mine that had cancer was really, really in a bind. She walked into... Uh, get assistance, and they told her it would be seven days, da 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 da. Yeah. And I, she came out and she was crying. And I said, Hang on, come on, let's go back in with your paperwork. And right there at the window, she walked out with her card. <laughs> she says, 
what did you do? And I says, don't worry about what I did. Come on, let's go. You used the force. Yeah. Yep, I was like, I was like, but I don't, you know, I'm very, very careful on that. Right. Uh, you know, only when needed, only when needed. <laughs> but what, what, how do you feel about the memory recall aspect of it? I have actually used it for crime vic, you know, people that have been robbed and, and things to this extent, mm -hmm. and it actually works really, really good. Hmm, okay. So, but I think it depends on the hypnotist. Well, yeah, obviously. And a lot of people doing it are not trained. Exactly, exactly. We're not even going to go there because New York, <laughs> New York only requires, New York for one doesn't recognize it and you can actually become a hypnotist in four hours at a Holiday Inn seminar. Right. So. And it's not just New York, I mean. Oh, there's a bunch of states. Yeah. There's a bunch of states where I actually trained with, oh my God, over 60 doctors and anesthetists and nurses. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Right. So I basically, the, the training that I took was medical training. Okay. And I just, the, uh, the gentleman that was, was our teacher, uh, Ron Esslinger, he, he only took, because I didn't have any medical background, but he took me because I made him curious. <laughs> so that is how I became one of his students. That's cool. nice. Because, because I struck his curiosity. So I had to laugh because when he would be talking about, uh, I wanted to know more about the whole religious aspect of it. I wanted to know about the whole, you know, mm -hmm. metaphysical mm -hmm. aspect of it. So while he was hitting on the medical, but yet didn't hit that door, my hand would go up. Hey, Ron. <laughs> so... <laughs> And I, had, I actually ran into him. He was doing a show. Uh, it was a big seminar, and his uh, secretary had hurt her shoulder. And I looked at her, and I was like, Ron hasn't fixed your shoulder yet? And she's like, no. What are you talking? Miss Lorna, you always scare me. <laughs> I'd say, do you want me to fix your shoulder or not? So we went back up to the hotel room. Her husband just looked and said, go ahead guess who didn't need rotor cuff surgery nice, nice. <laughs> so yeah well yeah i mean my, the mind over matter is a very powerful thing but it's just hard because we don't believe it so the hypnosis kind of gives you that extra the way that ron explained okay you have a master head clerk mm -hmm. and then you have all these little workers so what you're doing is you're contacting that master head clerk after you get your client down under hypnosis. And he's going to answer you whether or not it's fixable. Mm, okay. And then if it's fixable, you may end up sitting there for four or five, six hours mm -hmm. whenever they're ready and the master head clerk signals that it's all done, then it's done. Hmm. So it's definitely intriguing. Yeah. Definitely. Well, let's, let's, let's move on to something Peter talks about in his books which is okay. your use of dowsing rods. Yes. <laughs> and you, you really believe in these things, like these... Yeah, I mean, I've gotten answers that I didn't know and then later found out, you know, after I did some background checking or asked people or they told me. So I've gone in houses and ended up upstairs and I remember in a really old uh, B&B in, in the bed and I had this, I, I believe it was a little girl or somebody and before I could finish, she goes, yeah, a little girl died in this bed. And then my, my EMF meter started going off about the same time. Like, I verified it, but the EMF went off, too. Right. right. So it was everything was hitting. And she didn't even let me finish before my dowsing rods. I didn't know anything about the house, you know, or who died in that bed. So now, just now things like that. If I remember, your dowsing rods, you're not, you're not actually holding the rods themselves. Yeah, well, I'm holding them. Yeah, well, but they're the they're they they're spin in a loose tubing. Like. They spin loose. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I want them to go on their own. So yes. how do you think they work? I just think the energy. I've never. So when I first tried them, they didn't work at all, until I went to my grandmother's house, which I thought that was odd, but there's always been activity there. Mm -hmm. So and they start spinning so fast, I had to push my head back. And like, <laughs> Whoa! I mean, they were both spinning. And ever since then, they work, so I just think that spirits, the energy, mm -hmm. whatever. It's spirit. 
just whatever spirit tells me, it comes through, and I'm kind of the conductor. I I don't know what they're going to say. Right. And right. I tell people that I can't control what they say. Do Do you think some of it might be you picking up on unconscious information? Um. I don't know, because you know it could be. I mean, it could be th what people are thinking, but a lot of times, like you say, I get hits on a house that I don't even know are right. 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 And even with dowsing rods, I find it, if I'm doing like a tour. Like uh, I did the plantation down in, uh, at Spring Hill, down down outside of Nashville, mm -hmm. and you always have that wife that has drugged that husband along that doesn't want to <laughs> be there. Yeah. So you know, and I'll explain. You know, okay, these are dowsing rods. Da 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 da. da you know, people use them to find water with. Uh, electrical guys carry them to find their electric right. lines with. Right. So on and so forth, and we use them for spirit information. Mm -hmm. And so I would hand them to that husband that doesn't want to be there. <laughs> and it would be like, he'd be standing there and all of a sudden I go, okay, this is how you have to work them. And I explain, you're going to want them to close for, for, for yes and open, you know, open for no. Uh, and this, and it has to be yes or no questions. Right. So this is what we're going to do with them. Or if, the, if you want a location of something, they'll actually point you know, to which way you need to go and to get what you want, what, what you're looking for. And uh, the husbands are sitting there going, I'm not moving. They're looking at their wives and going, I'm not moving them. I'm not <laughs> moving them. They're, they're just moving on their own. So, no, it's, it, I believe it's spirit that's actually moving them. Okay. Do they mess with you? Absolutely. Mm. Because they have a sense of humor. Yes. They have a sense of humor. Well, the trickster so is obviously what very well known in this stuff. Absolutely. But that's just like, I took a course with a woman by the name of Dorothy Campbell. And her course was really, really interesting. And it was called Know Your Client Before Meeting Them. Hmm. So, with the dowsing rods and just their name, I could actually tell you everything about them. Nice. Uh-huh. Just by measuring their energy fields. I would definitely know my client hmm. before ever meeting them. Now, do you see auras? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I don't want to see them. Okay. You know, it's kind of sad when you see somebody walking and all of a sudden you say this gray haze right. come over right. them. And it's right. like, aww. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I prefer not to see them. Sure. But yes, sure. I do. Yes, I do. Okay. That's so you just see them all the time, or just they pop up here and there? They just pop up here and there. I'm not looking for them. It's just like people get really, really nervous if I get behind them in a grocery store and stuff, and they, they're, they're like, giving me to the front of the register. Oh, here, go ahead. Go ahead of me. <laughs> you know? And it's, it's like, and, and seriously, people, I don't want to know anything about you. You know? Right, right. I'm not di jumping into your head. The information I just have presents better, itself. I have better things to do, <laughs> and I'm not uh, the psychic that's going to stand there in the grocery store and go, oh, no, don't buy that butter. This is what your grandmother is telling no. you to buy, okay? Right. I don't have to say any names. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm j I, and I'm not about numbers on Facebook. Right, I'm not right. about reaching out and accepting friendships. My page is open. Right. You know, so if you've got something to say, you can totally, you don't have to know me. You can be Joe Blow, you know, I don't care, you know. Uh, I believe that I meet the people and come in contact with people that I'm supposed to meet. Right. Because yeah. I'm a universe girl, totally trust the universe. Yeah, me too. I know how that and, is. And uh, it's, uh, so, no, I people do. They get really, really nervous if I'm behind them. It's yeah. hysterical. <laughs> it is. It is so, so funny. So do you, do you pick up anything from my aura? Do I have to say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, You've got good energy. You do okay. have good energy. And then you have that little mystic side of you that... Well, that's more that than kind little. Of, yeah. It, it, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> my, my life has always been about trying to keep things in balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that is something that the universe has tried to show me from, from day one 
everything needs to be balanced. You can't go one, too much one way or the other, and both sides need each other. Exactly. You were exactly. talking when we were walking around the, the property about yin and yang, and that's exactly it. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. And like we said, you if you have if you have dark, if you don't have dark, then you don't know what the heck light is. Right. You know? Right. Mm -hmm. So. It's true. I, I, I will tell you, one of the things, when we were out back there, you had, uh, and I'm going to put that video up, assuming it came out with the wind, uh, for Patreons. Uh, but when we were out back there, that area, you know, you sense the shadow and stuff mm -hmm. like that. When I was first starting to play around with magic, I didn't believe it worked. Mm -hmm. And I had gone out there, and I'm standing on that hill, and this is at night, and I see this shadow move along the ground. And I'm watching this thing, and I'm going, this is a trick of my eye. It looked like liquid darkness, it was moving, and then it came almost up to me, and I, and I got the feeling it wanted to come into me, and I said, go ahead. And it shot into my feet, and then there was nothing. Over the next few weeks, I started feeling my moral compass sort of move. Mm -hmm. Like, well, why shouldn't I do this? Why is that? And suddenly I'm like, why am I thinking these things? This is not me. Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking about them like that shadow. And I went, no, that, really? So I went out that night, I walked out to the same spot, and I said, get out. And I watched the shadow shoot out of my feet and disappear into the field. And I went, absolutely. Huh. And people are like, that was a demon. I'm like, was it? Because it actually demon. tested me. And it left when I asked it to. Mm -hmm. So, and if it was a demon, it wouldn't have. Oh, wouldn't right. Have yeah. So, th that would have been a, oh no, that would have been one of those, Peter standing there going, I'm surrounded by a l white light, <laughs> yeah. and me going, <laughs> Here we go, we got I command you to leave, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, to me, like, like people look at it because it was a shadow, because it was moving my moral compass, it's like, no, that was testing my yeah. moral compass. Exactly. And I said no and made it leave. It wasn't trying to hurt me. It was trying to make me grow because it strengthened yeah. that. Exactly, exactly. And and you know we were we were just talking just a little while ago about magic, you know, mm -hmm. and some of the greats that yes. had written books yes. and and had done prophecies of the future and yeah, Edward Casey, Alistair, Alistair Crowley, Crowley yep. wow. <laughs> and you know people talk about Alistair as being dark. Well. Yeah. He was at times. He was genius. Yeah, he, was he was a genius, you know. Uh, so but a fallible human being like everyone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's uh, that's another thing. And you know, even myself, when you get to a certain level, I actually I I joke around because I'll call people humans. <laughs> I'm going okay. <laughs> Go, oh, let's just see him. <laughs> I'm not surprised, you know. So it's it's you know because sometimes you forget yeah, because yeah. you live you walk a different walk. Yep. And it's not that you're better than anybody else. So you perceive it's the world differently. Just perceive everything differently, you know. And it's just going. And plus, I'm old school. Mm. So can I be judgmental? I have to laugh because my daughter goes. Oh, my mother, when she speaks, she's just so sweet when she's doing this or she's doing that. <laughs> and one of my clients laughed and said, hell no, I got in your mother's chair and she told me to get my head out of my butt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep <laughs> it real. He's like, no, he says, your mother is as real as it, <laughs> as it comes because she'll tell you exactly, you know, it's nobody's fault but yours, da 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 right. You know, this is... That's yeah. not a bad thing. That's yeah. a good thing. Sometimes but yeah, people he was need like, to hear he was that. like, yeah, because yeah. yeah, Becca was like going, "Oh, my mom's always so sweet." And da 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 da. da. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> but you're honest. Because I'm honest. I am honest. So. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you in, in your book. Sure. Uh, you <coughs> have a sighting of a small gray, gray figure in a mental hospital. This was in the uh, dowsing rod section. Oh, in the asylum. I think so, yeah. Silent Poorhouse. Yeah, it was just something that captured when the pitcher took it that the energy was there. I don't know. I was holding, it was right where the dowsing rods are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually right up in that area before that happened, I got my ear tugged oh. in that same area. We did the walkthrough. I could feel it. I, mean, I thought something was hanging from the you know ceiling or something, but yeah. it definitely tugged my ear. And we actually heard kids laughing and running up down the stairway. I mean, that place was active. It was probably the most active place I've been in 
But oh. um, yeah, and we had all kinds. So with my dowsing rods, I think it was just picking up the energy there. And where I placed my camera, we got a shadow person in that same hallway. So that was pretty cool. I'm, I'm always fascinated by detecting small figures. But I don't always think they're children, but you have all the mythologies in, in the the lore of small people, small right. entities, and so that well, stuff always interests me. And the the small the smaller shadow was actually in a theater. If you're talking about the shadow in my video, because I got I caught a shadow person too in my video. Really? Yeah, okay. and that was in the, the theater downtown. Hmm. It was exactly what the college students were seeing. They were freaked out when I show, we showed them the video. That's the shadow. <laughs> they're like, it was small. It was only like two or three foot tall. Yeah. So they're but like, you got to remember too. If you go back, I mean, when they when they archaeologists when they get out and they're they're doing their digs and stuff, look at how tiny people actually were. Oh yeah. Because yeah. people were tiny. Yeah. Even back in the 1700s and stuff, to be tall was unusual. Yeah. Because people were small. Yeah, and so. I don't think we realize that. We've slowly been getting bigger. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah, so now. And then, you know, you look at, like, the hobbits they found, which uh -huh. is a whole other offspring of humans that were very small. You have oh, yeah. pygmies in Africa. Um, mm -hmm. It's true. So, I mean, there, there are, but I just, you know, when you look at st stories of, like, the fey folk and stuff, I mean, some of them were tall, but a lot of them were smaller. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and it always fascinates me when pick, people pick up those small spirits, and it's mm -hmm. like, is that a kid or is that... What and someone it, else might have interpreted as a faith folk year, mm -hmm. you know, a century ago. Exactly, exactly. But now, even with the dowsing rods, even if we have someone that's small, because we always do the age, you know? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. old are you? Right. How old are you? That's... And when they move fast, I know they're children because yeah. their energy is stronger. Okay. And then when they're older, they live a longer life, they're very slow. Uh -huh. So after a while, I've done it so many times, I can feel out the energy. I know what's coming through. And okay. I can tell, like, a faster energy is a smaller kid, childlike. So, so the note I put wrote here was, gifted woman who increased her haunting. You remember which story this was? Uh, I haven't read the book in, like, three weeks, so now I don't know all the... We've done a few of them that a lot of times they're intuitive or, you know, the, the house... They actually attract the energy, and it amplifies it. I think yeah, I think I know which one it is. I I got the bright figure. Is that the one with the maybe, bright figure? Maybe. Yeah, and she was shaken because she was seeing shadow people, and the other group told her it was probably demons, and she was being yeah, hunted down. Yeah, yes, that was probably. Mm -hmm. it. And she was actually shaking on the front porch, and she couldn't even put the cigarette to her mouth because yeah. she was terrified. And it wasn't anything like that. She actually was attracting it because she was actually intuitive gifted. yeah and she was gifted right and she actually went on a few cases after we got her calmed down and actually my dozen rods came through and i got a child and i kept pointing at her and she goes no that's i lost i you know the, the never had that baby i'm like well that's still that child still is still, still there connected. Yeah. she goes it's yeah. funny a ball rolled out down the hallway and it just acted like a little kid was playing with it <laughs> and then and my dozen rods are like yeah that's connected to you and she actually figured out it wasn't like a demon or anything and she actually calmed down and she went to some houses and she could see the figures and what was there so it was pretty interesting i, I suspect this stuff pulls energy from us so when we're afraid of it, it manifests more negatively? It, yeah. I mean, that house was crazy. It was active. Yeah. And I think it's really irresponsible when, when ghost hunters jump to that demon thing right off yep. the bat. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you got pushed? It's a demon. And now that person is, is more scared and it's picking up more negative energy. You've just enhanced this cycle. We call it yeah, manifesting. Right. They actually manifest more activity in the house. And actually, they, they're actually manifesting mm -hmm. it. Because yeah. they're gifted, too. So right, they're right. actually amplifying it. Yeah, exactly. We've exactly. seen it how many how many times? Okay. And Lorna's like, ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think that everyone has a little bit of it? Oh yes. Okay. Oh yeah. So, get that gut feeling. People say, I knew I should have went there. You know, I didn't go because I had a gut feeling. And you know, yeah. and I'm not knocking anybody, but I'm not a card girl. I do not do the cards. <laughs> okay. You know, because I don't need them. Right. Uh and over the last, oh my gosh, since I've, I have to laugh because there's been so many shops popping up one right after another. It used to be, 
if you came to a town, you'd go, oh, is there a psychic in this town? Right. And instead of just having one or two, we've got now 15 or oh, 20 yeah, or 30. Oh, yeah, there's a huge, or, huge yeah, surge in this stuff it, now. Yeah. Totally, totally. So it's, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this warning, is be careful where you reach out to. Yes. Because... I just got finished doing a case. Yeah, similar to one that was in my book. And yeah, yeah. And I looked at the woman and I went, "Part of this is what you're dealing with, as far as do you have paranormal activity? Absolutely. But I'm also getting part of this was sent. Yeah, yeah. There, we were talking about this outside before yeah. we did the show that they're just just like computer scammers popping up and saying your computer is infected with malware. Please call us. It's yeah. it's exactly psychic people or pe scammers pretending to be psychics doing the same thing or people who have some ability. They have some abilities and they can actually remote and they can send the activity yeah. to you. Yeah. And it's and 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 not only that inexperienced and and not everybody's got a little bit of gift. But you got, they have to be careful. I mean, they're destroying marriages. They're, sure. The direction is really, really bad. I'm like, I just, I just kind of like just pray to the universe and just <laughs> kind of shield myself from it. And, and, uh, it's, it's really awful. So it's like you have to be careful. Yeah. You yeah. have I, to meet, not meet somebody, do a contract with them. Uh, to to cleanse your home, or they tell you that they can do a distance cleansing. Yeah, yeah. They're they're red flags. Or if they're Those charging are, money, really. If, if they're and, charging well, a lot of money. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's that's the warnings. You know, it's like no. I mean, do I charge money? Yes. Hmm. If Peter and I go to a house, though, our our paranormal investigation is totally free. Right. Mm, okay. Will I clean your house? Whether you have money or not, the money doesn't matter because the issues have got to be taken care of. Right. And right. this is what we're there to do. <coughs> so that normally I'll say, gift me. Ah, uh, okay. All right. You know, just gift me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. whatever it's worth to you, just gift me, you know? Do you want to talk about the story in your book, Peter? Which one, though? The one where the college student got scammed? Yeah, yeah the, the whole candle thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, it, it's funny because I'm trying to remember my book and what happened, but um, he's like, ah, I shouldn't have done it. I'm like, what? He's like, I had this person said they'd send me a candle, and it would, if I burn this candle, all the activity would you know, be gone. So he ends up burning, he, and she asked a ton of money. I don't know if it was like seven or $900. Yeah. Wow. And, and she said, for $900 or whatever, I'll give you this red candle or whatever it was. And if you burn it, all your activity will stop. So he burns the candle, and the activity goes crazy. And he just got a uh, check from a student housing or something. Know, it was a large amount. I can't remember. It was four thousand dollars. Yeah. But this lady must have remote viewed, but she could see it, and she asked for that exact amount oh, on that wow. check that he just received in the mail. He's like, I don't know how she's seen that, but um, <laughs> he's like, oh, then then he knew he was being scammed, yeah, and he yeah. called us. Lauren's like, I'll do it for free. You don't have to pay me. <laughs> so it was funny that, and you picked up right away. It's like somebody sent this energy to you. Well, didn't well, didn't you deal with him prior to? Yes. So he was he is intuitive too. Okay. And he had some people pass around him. He kept getting activity from him, and yeah. So we and I actually got some pretty good photos, but yeah, we had crazy activity. Pop lights are popping out and just. EMFs are going crazy, and we did a, a show, a local TV show with, with him. So, Well, um, I, had, I had to laugh, too, because when we went there, we ended up with no footage, and we had some of the best activity. Yeah. And what, it was like Peter never even it? turned on the cameras. It just like I never recorded anything. Oh, oh there was just The nothing. cameras were nothing. on. They were running the, the whole time. I we could see standing. the record light going, you know. I knew it was recording. We were standing uh, in the bedroom. This thing flew out from underneath the bed. I saw it just as plain as day. It went around Peter, and it landed on Peter's leg. I'm like, 
Oh my God, Peter! Shake your leg. It's I, on your leg. I felt it. it was ice cold. I was like, <laughs> I don't want it. I'm shaking it off. She goes, Oh, it flew out, and then and then it flew into that guy's chest. Yeah. Oh. And his, I was, and his eyes went back. And his, Peter's like, he was standing right in front of me. I just see his eyes roll back. And, I mean, his eyes were gone. It rolled right back in his head. He starts falling, so I catch him. And I'm going. <laughs> I'm like, what is going <laughs> on? Yeah. And we had nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Wow. Nothing. And this was multiple cameras that had nothing? Yeah, yeah I had yeah, nothing. I had cams, yep, I had different cameras. Because one, okay, that's a glitch. Right. But multiple cameras doing that is not a glitch. Right. Exactly. No, we had nothing. We didn't have EVPs. We didn't have nothing. anything. Wow. And another thing that was really unusual about the whole, because I picked it up when I went into, went into the house, there was no mirrors. Hmm. Who has no mirrors? Yeah. Yeah. In their house. And it was his grandmother, his mother, his grandmother. His mother. His mother. So she's sitting out there and she's having herself a glass of wine. And I said to her, I says, so who in your family did mirror magic? <laughs> and it actually turned out that it was her great-grandfather was actually sought out through Europe. Wow. For mirror magic. And this is why there was no mirrors in this home. <laughs> I was like, going. you picked up a lot in the house, and that whole house shifted. And I felt it when we walked in. She goes, "Oh, it's trying to avoid me." You could feel the whole room shift, like the whole room <laughs> went to the back. She goes, oh, "It's in the back." I'm like, "I just felt that, like the room shifted." <laughs> it was a weird feeling. Yeah, well, I'm sure. It's like a, I don't know why you. That's I've, what. That's when the. That's when that part of me that nobody's supposed to know about <laughs> comes out. <laughs> I was doing. Moravia, I'll never forget it. It's crazy. I had someone on stage, and I was like, oh, I really need to get this person off the stage for a certain reason. So I went up, and I, I said, oh, okay, you know, I'm going to go ahead and step in here. I says, I bet you you're all wondering how psychics get their information, da-da-da-da-da, you know. And I, I included the person, and then I pulled somebody up from the audience. And when I got finished, I actually shifted the whole auditorium. Hmm. I didn't mean to, and it scared everybody in the audience because they all it's, felt it's it. It's freaky when you... You were there. Yeah, you, it's freaky when you feel it. And everybody was like... What do, you, what do you think happens at that shift at that point? It's weird. I have no clue because I really don't... I'm not aware of it oh, because okay. I'm almost okay. like someplace else. All right. So whether that shift is me coming back in mm. it's but a it's a weird you, feeling it's it's it's, it's like the room leaving well, that's what i'm saying do you, do you think maybe it's like a slight dimensional shift like you've moved to a diff slightly different timeline yep. or okay that's like exactly what or that like. you just changed the energy I, the, the whole energy just changes it's it's yeah. okay same thing when you go in the house like i use my dozen rods but after a while i can feel energy in different rooms and you can feel the energy change, and if there's something around me, I'll feel it. Like I got that. I won't. I can't see it like Lorna, but I'll feel it around right. me. I know there's something there. Uh, what was one of the other things? There? Oh, Baylor House. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I actually switched the name, but uh, that was a pretty creepy house where the where the the lady got jumped into, and the spirit jumped her. It's funny. She said. The boy's warning me out in the yard, don't go in that house. There's a little boy mm. out there. And this is the medium talk. And she was I shouldn't go in the house, but I'll go and do the show with you guys. And she got a warning. And she was, I'm going to remain open. She goes, she goes, I usually close myself off. And she didn't. And she went in there. And I'm watching her. And all of a sudden, her fists start balling up. And she gets this menacing look on her face. She's very never like this. And she starts screaming, that boy better get in the back bedroom. I'm like, well, that's not her personality. And she starts stomping around. And and then I see her face change. I'm like, we got to get her out of here. And then she just starts wandering toward, there's a stairway that's all open. If she fell down that, mm -hmm. and that's where they said a woman got thrown down and died, actually. Now, was this you? No. Okay. This was another medium, and I actually grabbed her shoulders and stared her away from the stairway, and I walked her out, and when I got her outside, she looked up at me, and she goes, what happened? Huh. I'm like, you don't remember any of that? Wow. And she's like, oh, my God, it was that guy. She said a guy jumped into her, and he was very angry, 
And it took her. It took her weeks to get that energy out of her. She said she felt that like intense anger. So huh. she that's never happened to her. But it was to watch it was pretty freaky to watch. So, uh, what about the house from hell? <laughs> yeah, that was a ba- that was a bad house. That was Obviously. our first. <laughs> that was the first house that we actually <coughs> we knew it was something. It wasn't normal. You can feel the energy as she made your stomach turn. Like yeah. it was something there. It wasn't right. And um, <clears throat> the people were ready to move out. They were actually laying down in their kitchen. They were all sleeping in the kitchen. And that's it. They wouldn't go upstairs because they knew. She goes, we, up, we go upstairs, we're going to get scratched. Mm. They got scratched in the middle of their back, inside of their legs. They would have pants on and their legs would start bleeding. And it would be three long scratch marks up inside their leg. So we never got scratched when we were there, but we felt it. It was just, it was crazy there. Were and, you uh, able to do anything about it? We did bring, the, the, so the, the people were getting ready to move out. In the time we um, went through our evidence, said, oh, yeah, we got these growling noises and all this stuff. And the medium that I was, there's a young girl I was working with. She was not very She's old. She's a sweetheart. Yeah, she was only 16 at the time. She says, I'll go there, but something's wrong with that house. I said, yeah, I know. I had a dream about it. <laughs> And this big evil thing staring up just before we went on our investigation it wasn't human looking and like three other people had the same dream just before we went on the investigation uh, what do you make of stuff like that do you think it's actually demonic or do you think it's just something we don't understand i think it, i call it inhuman it didn't look human to me it definitely wasn't a human form but understanding too and i get where you're coming from because that's actually i never say demon okay I always say it could be an ancient spirit. It's something that we don't understand. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's evil. Right. It may growl because that's the only way it knows how to communicate. Sure. And a lot of times what happens is is people screw around. They open up portals. It comes through the portal, and it gets stuck because those portals close. Mm. So then it can't get home. So what's it going to do? It's angry. It's going to raise havoc right right and that's the way i look at it i just look at it it's an ancient spirit through time that got sucked into a warp and ended up where it can't get back yeah where it's always been there i mean i did a <clears throat> i got a phone call one time and it's actually a location that that's used for paranormal research and things to that extent and i got a phone calling something's wrong something's wrong up here can you come up and check da 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 I got up there, I caught it, I was standing outside the building, I got it like on the on, on the upper floor, and all of a sudden I knew that it had gone to the basement, so hmm. I headed to the basement. Now there's no water or anything, the pipes and everything, or, and I was like, so I just went ahead and opened up communication with it, and I was like, I can open up this doorway, this portal for you, so you can leave. Right. Don't make me have to do something to contain you so if you choose you know this is your choice and so I went ahead and I opened it and every pipe in that building shook (laughs) it was like I was like (laughs) everybody was going my god (laughs) but it was just it was just the energy you know so, because I don't look at things as being, they get stuck. Yeah, yeah. They get stuck. Are they shaped like us? No. Yeah, and that's y- what the medium said. She's seen it crouch down, and it was just like what I said. It was all the swirly stuff coming out of it, and she said it just, once the mediums could see it, it just kind of cre- it crouched down. It realized she could see it. Yeah. But it was funny, because I went upstairs... And I could hear the medium talking to me. I thought she was right behind me. And it was her voice. She says, Peter, come up here. And so I'm following the voice. There was nobody up there. I'm like, something's not right. I realized something was trying to draw me upstairs. <laughs> I look out the window and the medium's outside getting sick and choking. Like oh. She's like cho- literally choking. Like it was so strong that she was getting sick. Like So a lot of things were happening. I didn't, in that time, I'm like, they can mimic people oh yeah yeah Mimics mm-hmm. is very they're common. strong so you can't trust what you hear yeah when yeah. people say oh i heard a little girl you might not be listening to a little girl <laughs> mm-hmm. so our shape-shifting too they can shape like people the 
and the, the comparison I always make is that you know people love cats. Cats are so wonderful, but if you're a mouse, that thing is the most evil demon you're yeah. ever going exactly, to encounter. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So don't always just because you're seeing a little boy or a little girl, don't always think it's a well. Yeah. yeah. They can shape shift, <laughs> and they can be. I've had people have conversation with what they thought was the owner. Mm-hmm. And the person wasn't even there. They pulled in the driveway and like, who are you talking to? I'm like, I'm talking to you. You're inside that. <laughs> you see me. I just pulled in. Like, who are you talking to? See, and on the other hand of the spectrum, so you have the people who just think everything is demons. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, that's been a running joke on this show because no matter what you talk about, there's someone going, it's all demonic. And yeah. it's like, that means nothing. But all right. Nothing. You know? Yeah. It's exactly. very, very seldom you run into a negative case, but there you can do attachment cases, and even spirit attachment can be bad. Sure, sure. So it, they're not necessarily demonic, but they can attach to you. Just like the one, the, the girl we did, where they hit, they she had an accident hitting the uh, person suicidal, mm-hmm. and that's kind of stuck with her, attached. It wasn't yeah. bad, but it stuck with her. Mm-hmm. So her removing attachments is like a big thing. And what, what, how do spirits get attached to somebody? Are they always spirits of the dead? Or are they different things? They're different things. Okay. But a lot of it is it, because of the fact that they actually draw it. So could it be a spirit? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I know the one girl. I was like, I knew as soon as we got there. I was like, because she had a big bruise across her nose and everything, and I was like, Peter, I says, that's not what happened, because she said that this ghost pushed her off the porch. Well, it wasn't. It was actually she got hit before somebody had left her house. Oh. Uh, That was my story was The story was was her boyfriend was possessed. It oh. wasn't the boyfriend that was possessed. It was her who huh. had the possession. She kept making these excuses around her. <clears throat> yeah, I vaguely remember that from your book. That one didn't stand yep. out for it, some reason. It was a voodoo. Okay. Called the voodoo okay, house. Okay, yes. All right. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. That was a pretty That's interesting case. That's the one where case. we had the goat legs and stuff. The yep. goat legs yep. okay. in the basement uh-huh. were sacrificing goats. And there was weird things in the jar little furry thing so i'm like what is that yeah, like somebody okay. was doing, I do remember that. doing mm-hmm, a lot of mm-hmm. stuff down here but you know they had toys going and on actually and actually her eyes going. turned solid black when i was sitting at the kitchen table oh, talking to her yeah. her eyes started, turned solid black and i was like but this is why peter and i would never do a show yeah. we would mm-hmm. be a paranormal comedy show because my reactions are like just i was like oh Heck, now I got to go to work. You know, <laughs> I remember. And Peter's I remember that. standing there going. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, you, what?" <laughs> I, I remember that video because you have that one on video, right? Yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah. We do. And she found the Ouija board, and she's like, "Where's the Ouija board? What a Ouija board? No, the one I, upstairs." I said it's wrapped up. I said it's wrapped up in in a cloth. Yeah. And she brought it down. It was actually wrapped up in a Jesus tapestry. Which did nothing. The Last Supper. <laughs> and I I had just cleansed the house, so there I didn't want to I would didn't want to take it I took it outside. Yeah. And it was really, really hot out. It was like really hot. And there was no air moving. And I went ahead and I laid it down in the grass and I went ahead and closed I had to laugh because when we came out, there's these dogs all in a line and they were all like sitting there looking happy or whatever. Yeah. They're, I'm like, they're happy you're taking the Ouija board outside. They were following us. They're like watching. They're taking the Ouija board. It's like the dogs are watching us. So I, I tell Peter, I says, now check this out. And I threw the Ouija board down on the ground. Because you always know when they're open because they're really, really heavy. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And so I said, Peter, check this out. I says, put your hand there. And it was just like an air conditioner blowing up out of the ground. There's cold air coming out of it. That's awesome. It was like 90 degrees. He was like, and then when I closed it, then it was just a plain board piece piece of board again, you know? Do do you think it's the board, or do you think it's what the people are using it for? No. Okay. Uh, Jay Wosley, that works with uh, Ghost Hunters, Grant, and them. Okay. Him and his wife, I met up in... uh, Mass, New, New Hampshire, Mass area at a show. Mm-hmm. And they made the coolest Ouija boards out of old barn wood. Mm. And uh, 
the plants that were really unique. They were used, made with old magnifying glass thingies and stuff like that. So they were really awesome. So I finally got a break to where I could stand up and just move around. So I went over to check out his wooden boards mm -hmm. and met him and his wife. And I was like, oh, I says, these things can be so much fun. I says, watch this. And I went ahead and I took my hand and I opened up the board. And it was like air was just coming out of it. And, the, and it was, this was being held in an old train station. So, and it was really hot. It was during the summer. And it was like air conditioning coming up out of the board. It was like, oh. <laughs> and Jay's like, how in the heck did you do that? I says, any child can do it. You know? <laughs> I says, you just got to have a child like mine. I says, I've just never grown up, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then I went ahead and closed it. And everybody was like going. Stick my hand and closed it. So do you think the board itself has something special because of the like design? a portal? Like it can it, be it like may, a it's a portal. It's a portal. So is it the design? Do you think that does it, or is it people's because people. they think so much of it? It's because they think so much of it. Okay. It's because they think so much of it. I didn't know if maybe it had because sigil it's, sort it's, of properties of the, of the way it's designed. Well, and I have to laugh because, like I said, it, it won't, if if they're opened and they're not closed, it it sucks and and. It's a portal. It's a doorway. Right. You know? So that's why it becomes heavy. Okay. When it's closed, it's just it comes back and it's just a regular piece of wood again. Right, right. You know, or the press wood that they use. And it's yeah. just a regular piece of press wood. Yeah, mass-produced uh, piece of wood. Women, women down south, the old hill women, actually in the mornings they would take their, their uh, flour and stuff and they would actually make an Ouija board out of their flour. Really? And use their wooden spoon for their pendulum, for their, you know, for their uh, plant set. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they would get their answers for the day, and then they would cover it up because they didn't want their husbands to know what they were doing. And then they would go ahead and make their bis biscuits, you but know? It doesn't matter what so, you got. So it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a white backer board just with writing on it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and I've, I've actually made my own. I'm like, I'm going to try this. It works just as good. Sure. Well, mm -hmm. I think so many people so, are just afraid of the concept. Yes. Oh, I'm terrified. The, the terrified. problem is you don't know who you're talking to. They think they're talking to Martha, you know, their aunt. or Yep. That's the problem. You really don't know who's coming through. So you had a story in the, in the book about a haunted bar that had a changing sign. Yes, yes, that was out by Lions, and the lady was telling they were telling us the story. It's crazy. Um, I remember there was a, I believe I think it was a shooting, if I remember right, but the the sign changed and it started saying "kill, kill, kill." So it was a sign that, like, you could put messages on. Right, right. Yeah. So the, and nobody was there. Nobody was changing it. And all of a sudden, it said, kill, kill, kill. And the ambulance came by. And they're like, what is going on? And they're like, somebody got killed down there. They're like, well, that that's kind of weird that the sign was just. Yeah. yeah. It changed, you know. So, yeah, it was kind of interesting. And that ever, bar itself had activity. In yeah, it. the bar had crazy activity. Yeah. The one bar, I got that face that looks <clears throat> kind of like an animal right, looking through right. that window. Yeah. And uh, that's what they said. They would see an animal looking through. Uh, that was that, close That was close by, too. There, there was a story about a woman who told the cops about a jewelry store robbery. Yeah, and I think she was gifted, but um, she didn't even remember calling the cops or anything. So I don't know what she was, like, she was out of it. Or what, what, Tell the story, like, what? what? All I remember is, um, I'm trying to remember the story myself because that was way back. Um, the cops called her back, says, hey, we're calling you back from you called us last night. She goes, I called you? What, what do you mean I called you? <laughs> yeah, you said there was a robbery at the jewelry store at 3 o'clock in the morning. She, and you, you were standing out there. You went out there and. Like, waving us down, like, she, you don't remember that? No. She says, we're just calling you back to take a thing. We caught the guys that were robbing the store. She's like, what? She says, yeah, you called us. I'm like, I don't, she didn't remember any of it. So it's, it was bizarre. It's a bizarre story. But yeah, yeah, because, A, how did she know? How did she know the guys were robbing the store at 3 o'clock in the morning? And why didn't she remember? And why didn't she remember the whole thing? So I don't know if she was, like, out of it or what. Hmm. I, I never did if, find out. I wonder out. if she was astroplaning. Yeah, maybe she yeah. was off. Because yeah. they said you were out there in your nightgown. I wonder if she was astroplaning. Yeah, it, I, I never, I'd love to go back and talk to her because I never, it was a, 
It was that a crazy story. That would be interesting story. to find out. Yeah, it would definitely be I mean, they had police reports and everything. They caught the guy robbing the... Because she could have been sound asleep in her bed. That's what, yeah. And yeah. went for a walk. But how did she call... <laughs> but how did she call the police, too? And how did they get notified? That was... It was or maybe, a, maybe she came back from it, still half asleep, made the call. And yeah. Mm -hmm. It happens. But they actually... Could have been sleepwalking. Yeah. Yeah. She could have been sleepwalking. So I don't know. It was just a bizarre story that stuck in my head. Yeah, so. no, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. You, you talk about the ghost boxes in here. Yes. And tell people a little bit about what a ghost box is and how you think it works. Um, it just it just works on a, um, a chip, and it basically spins, kind of like that you see on the ghost box nowadays. It allows the energy to come through, and certain messages... We'll spit out okay, words. This is, this is not the one that picks up radio. No, this is different from that. Okay. Yeah, it's not the SB770 or whatever that okay, is. Okay, so this has a chip with yeah, words it's on a, it? It has a chip with, yeah, they're, and they're they're in there. It's like it's a thousand. Like a dictionary. It's a like dictionary, like a thousand words. Okay. And it allows the spirits to come through and actually spit the words out. And how, how do you think a spirit knows how to make that work? I don't know. I've always wondered about the, the talker boxes, but I've gotten names and actually people people's names on them. Now, I My like the name. portals. The portal's very similar to that. What's it works the on the same thing. A portal, you can actually hear them, hear them. Oh. You, you can tell whether it's a male. You can tell whether it's a female. You can tell whether it's a child. So what does the ghost box do? <clears throat> the, ghost, the ghost box is more of a... Just it's the same voice. Oh, it's, it's just like an electronic. It's, voice. it's electronic, electronic voice. voice. It's all the same. Where and she's the, talking about the the actual voice comes through of yeah, the spirit. Yeah, the actual voice of the spirit. Is comes it through. still using? So how is how is that generating the voice? Um, I don't use that. So her okay. her other I ghost have hunter. I at the house. Okay. Yeah, it's so. it's based on a, a kind of the same theory, and it works That's on that. And it, but it picks up their voice. My phantom gunshot from the library came yeah, you through. You want to tell people that story? That's crazy. <laughs> uh, I was doing a radio show with Big Dog out of, out of uh, Kankakee and, uh, and another young, young lady out of uh, North Carolina. And I was talking about the house that I had just, just acquired. And it's a big old farmhouse. And as I was talking about who built it and so on and so forth, all of a sudden, I had this phantom gunshot come out of the library. And it, we actually lost connection between all of us. And uh, so when we all got back onto the radio show, I was like, okay, guys, we're going to do a walkthrough. I said, that was definitely a gunshot. Uh, and uh, I says, I don't know. First time I've heard a gunshot in the house. And <laughs> I, was, I was a little bit... It, it, Kind of threw me a little bit sure. because I wasn't expecting it. So well, then you're always worried it's like, a real gun. It's just me and the little dog. You know, yeah. we're good. We're okay. And uh, so we went ahead and cut the show short. But they actually heard the gunshot on the show. Okay. So uh, Brian uh, was over, and he's one of my ghost hunters. And we had the portal box out, and we were all sitting there. And all of a sudden, here comes the phantom gunshot again, and this time, though, you heard this gentleman say, well, he's dead, you know, <laughs> so I'm like going, all right, you know, so uh, the house has always been very, very active. I was attracted to it about five years ago, and uh, finally it came up at auction, and hmm. nobody knew about the auction, and I was no. the only one, and so no, definitely Nice. Definitely meant to be. Definitely meant to be. And how old is it? Uh, the house was, they started building in 1830. It was completed in 1860. Wow. So, and it was, uh, the property itself was actually property that was gifted, uh, granted to a uh, Civil War soldier oh. back in the 1700s. Uh, the tail end of the 1718, right in there. And, uh, he farmed it, then it sold over to another farmer, and then in uh, 1830, 1820, the tail end of 1820, uh, George Chase had purchased it, and he was a whaler from Nantucket. Hmm. And uh, him and his son actually built the house, 
uh, George passed in 1855, so his son and, and George's granddaughter. So it stayed in the Chase family for a while. Uh, a lot of history with the Chase family. He actually owned 750 acres wow. in Auburn. He had three rock quarries, which all the stone that Auburn Prison is built out of came out of his mm. rock quarries. Uh, and a lot of the downtown district was built from the stone, from his rock quarries. Uh, he was actually the coroner during the Van Nuys murders. So actually in my parlor, you can see the table marks where they oh. would do the layouts of bodies. Wow. So That's pretty, that's pretty wild. We did yeah. find a uh, headstone upstairs in the attic. Yeah, you were showing me <laughs> I'm like, picture. I'm upstairs working around. I'm like, there's a headstone up here. Why is there a headstone in your attic? <laughs> oh, that's pretty crazy. And, uh, and I think most people would be horrified by that. But I thought it was cool. I'm like, yeah. where's, where's the rest of it? I was putting it together. <laughs> right, exactly. I would have been like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. Uh, we cool. found, you got, the guys uh, found a uh, 1950s BB gun that actually still works out in the barn. Yeah. Wow. Up and underneath the step. Yeah, the guy pulls it out like, is that a gun? <laughs> and we were looking at it, well, it's a BB gun, but it's really old. So, huh. so yeah. We found some and cool it was, stuff. It was uh, 1950s. Yeah. Uh, the house is very, very unusual. People, you can actually get disorientated and get, and not lose lose your sense of where you're at. Really? In the house and, and how to get out of it. What do you think causes that? I think it's the house actually shifts. I think it's mm. got a time dimensional shift in it. Nice. And Peter's actually got one photo that it was taken during the day and it's not in the house. But yet, it was taken in the house. Yeah. Is that the one you showed me? Yeah. It looks yeah. nothing like the house upstairs. Okay. And mm -hmm. it looks like there's someone standing there with a little dog next to her. Yeah. It looks yep. like a little dog. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, it's, it's blurry. It's hard to tell. Yeah. But th there does seem to be a very definitive shape there. Looks like legs. Uh -huh. and, and I know the, the first morning that I had moved in, the first morning that I had spent the night there, I had two friends from Carthage there because we had been moving all day mm -hmm. and the girls spent the night and I, th I got up about 5.30, went out and I was sitting at the dining room table having coffee and uh, I thought one of the girls had gotten up. It wasn't. <laughs> this lady walked out of the parlor and into the library, long brown dress, her hair, probably, probably late 20s, early 30s, very, very pretty. Uh, no, just walked right across the hall from the in the parlor into the library and I was like okay well it's not the girls up and I just went back and got more <laughs> coffee I was like okay <laughs> so no uh, to, to, to me this stuff is like as long as it's not a real person we're fine I'm good yeah. I'm yeah. good I put ADT in <laughs> it's for it's for the living not right for, not, yeah, not, exactly. not for the not for the residents it's for the living it's, yeah. de it's definitely <laughs> active there though I heard boy I heard like conversation going on I was working on the front door. I'm like, who are you talking to, Lorna? She goes, I was way back there. I'm like, well, it was upstairs. It was a man and a woman talking. You could hear it coming through the vents. And I'm just listening as I'm working. I'm like, there's nobody up there. So it was pretty well, cool. Well, we were talking earlier about maybe doing a show from there when they're oh, investigating. Oh, the, definitely. That would definitely. Be cool. that, yeah, that would be definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. But you got to get there early because my library is awesome. Okay. So All definitely, right. you, you got to get there. <laughs> And, I, I, I and like there's quite, I mean, so far uh, the guys have found a telegraph machine there, which that's actually connected to the Chase family. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a bottle of uh, perfume from Germany from 1920. Nice. I've got uh, the glass that was missing out of the front actually just appeared up there. Uh, huh. So the, the stained glass piece for the front. Yeah. Yeah. So got that. What do, you, what do you think about apports? Hmm. I mean, you're, you obviously get them. I mean, you got the, the glass and stuff. Things move. Mm -hmm. I've, I've yeah. seen it quite a bit on cases. Oh, yeah. People's keys, things disappear, like, and then it reappears, or it's changed location. Yeah. It's oh, like, my gosh. I'll never forget living crazy. in Tennessee. My I've husband and I got this house, and it was ancient. I mean, nobody had lived there for years. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it was cool. It had seven peaks. It was really a neat house. Yeah. And uh, so we, we acquired it and a big old farm. And uh, I was like, 
I knew that it had a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. And I came in one day and I threw the keys, motorcycle keys down on the table and, and did a couple things around the house. And, and I turned around and I was like going, went to go get my keys. Couldn't find my keys. <laughs> anywhere. Anywhere. My keys were in the friggin' refrigerator. <laughs> it's where they end up. It's kind of interesting. I was like, okay. <laughs> so now putting things down and having them disappear. Like, spirits have a sense of humor. Yep. You know? Yes. Yep. They definitely have a sense of humor and can be playful. Well, and, I you think, know? and again, I think a lot of times they draw energy from us. Exactly. So if you have a good sense of humor, then they're going to have a good sense of humor. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it just, uh, I'm just, so I was so used to it. I had to laugh, though, because when we first started working on it, we got the downstairs because it was a big, big house, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we had gotten a lot of the downstairs, you know, set up to where we could stay there. And uh, we were working on the upstairs. And the people were, they were pack rats. And, uh, oh, my God, there was, like, old-time magazines and and uh, just everything from old farm medicine to whatever. And we had worked up there all day and got a lot of stuff boxed up and, and things like that. So that night, my husband and I are downstairs and we're sleeping in the living room and all of a sudden it sounded like a freaking herd of elephants up there it just sounded like everything was getting thrown i was like billy billy wake up <laughs> go up and see what the heck's going on up there he's oh, i ain't going up there <laughs> <laughs> That's great. but we went up in the morning and everything was still packed right Right. So I was like, because we were like, we're, well, if you're not going up there, I'm not going to worry about it. We're good. And I used to laugh because I actually was lucky enough to score curtains at a, at a one of those flea markets. And they were actually as old as the house was. Oh, nice. So that was really, really nice because you know how you walk in and you got the old timey, you know, beautiful cherry stairway and you yeah. know, the entry hall. So I hung the curtains in the entry hall and into the living room. And you would hear the front door, and you would see the curtains just like somebody blew by them, you know, mm -hmm. the curtains mm -hmm. move. And I used to get a kick out of it because they would actually walk through the living room, walk through the dining room, go to the kitchen, and go to the bathroom. You'd hear the bathroom door, and the toilet would flush. <laughs> That's a big one. I've... I'm like yeah. going... <laughs> So you've heard other cases with the toilets? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we've heard the toilet flush. Yeah, we've actually heard I'm it. Like, did, did the toilet actually flush? Yeah, I mean, we heard it flush, yeah, and it was like re... So something pushed the handle down. Okay. So actually it did flush. So it wasn't just the sound? No, it wasn't just the sound. It was actually the toilet flushing. Hmm. It's strange. But that's like we were talking about the barn out at my place. Mm -hmm. that, that, that was electric. The old, what do you call it? The knob and tube. Knob and tube electric. Mm -hmm. They're on a turn thing, like a dial. Right. Which is and hard. they're hard to they're turn. They're hard to turn, yeah. And you said the lights will come on on their own. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have to say, okay, I have to pay the electric bill. Can you please shut these off? <laughs> and have you gotten this on video? I think the guys actually caught it on video. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the guys out of uh, Syracuse have caught it on video. Okay. So. Well, we've seen gates open, front doors are open, the dogs are outside because they have animals. It's like, the dog didn't open it, and they'll right. lock it, and something's unlocking and locking the door. And same thing, we did that one out in Cortland. Mm -hmm. The gate would always be open, and the dog would always get out. Yeah. yeah. So, it was pretty interesting. Hmm. So. Well, we did that one, uh, Port Byron. Port Byron, too, yeah. The dog was let out. Oh, yeah, yep. In Port Byron, yep. It's like, who and we were all upstairs. There was nobody down there. We were there, and we come out, and the gate's wide open. We're like, well, we knew the gate was locked, so something so opened it. In, in the book, I hope we have time for this last piece. Uh, there was a, We were talking reincarnation earlier. I wrote down reincarnation and Sarah. Do you remember what that is in the book? Sarah. Is that the one connected to the her child talking? Maybe. About? Well, there was one. So, yeah, this lady told me about her um, child. It's funny. They moved in this house, and there actually was 
uh, it was connected to a suicide, and they had activity. So she was telling me about the activity, but she since moved out. She goes, well, there's no sense investigating. She says, but I'll tell you about my, my brother. He actually um, took his own life, and I felt bad. I always felt like, I don't know, we had a really strong connection. But anyway, right at the same time, I got pregnant, mm -hmm. and she had, a, had her baby, and she started saying her brother's name. Hmm. Like he reincarnated into her, right? Yeah, or him, I believe it was. And um, he goes, "That's my birthday. That's my birthday." Well, that was her brother's birthday, and he kept pointing at the thing. And he, the mannerisms, he had the same deep blue eyes, and the yeah, mannerisms were the one. Yeah. very. Mm -hmm. And he kept saying his name was, was her brother's name, like David or something. I yeah, believe it was David. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, I'm David. Don't call me that. I'm David." It's like, well, that's weird. And then she would say things that only her brother would know. So that's what freaked her out. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. He shouldn't, yeah. this little two-year-old shouldn't be telling me <laughs> stuff like this. So, yeah, it was a pretty cool story. I mean, it was kind of sad, but it was kind of cool. I, I always, always liked the idea uh, Jane Roberts, Seth had with, uh, where he said that we reincarnate in families, but not necessarily bloodlines, but fam like there are types of people who kind of stick together. Right. Well, actually, with hypnosis and, and, and uh, a lot of the research, it's, it's families stay together. Hmm. Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Do we change, you know, positions of, you know. Right, right, yeah. But yes, but spirit-wise, hmm. the, the spirit that we host is connected. Is all connected. Actually, one house that I did, when she was under hypnosis, she was talking about the same house with the big white columns. Remember that? And, mm -hmm. she, and she always was connected. We actually investigated the house. She was always drawn to this house. It was like 1800s, really old house. But when she went under hypnosis, she was actually, if you go back in time, she actually lived in that house. Mm -hmm. And she was a little girl <laughs> there. And she was talking about the house as she goes upstairs, mm -hmm. and there's one bedroom. She was just peeling now. It's exactly the, she described the house perfect, mm -hmm. under and hypnosis. Actually, there's a photo, and guess who's standing in the window? Her. A little girl. There was a little girl. And it's, it's bizarre that it, it came back around in the hypnosis, and she was actually a little girl that lived in that house. And she described it perfect. Mm -hmm. See, that's impressive. That that was impressive yeah. to me because I want to know. I'm I'm a skeptic. I want to know the facts. She nailed that house. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it gives me the chills. So. Well, I know when I did that hypnosis with the one guy at, at the studio. Oh yes, James. Uh huh. Yep. James, yeah, the surfer dude. <laughs> the surfer. Yep. And, that came through. And, and then he was a farmer. Yep. And uh, he was Amish too because he was, he was talking a little, like. Yeah, he was talking. Yeah, that freaked him out for a while afterwards because he's like, I don't remember any of that. <laughs> mm -hmm, that that mm -hmm. stuck with me. That was actually a really good one. And this is another thing that I do. I make sure, and I know it's a little bit freaky, but I make sure when I bring people back that I cut that memory off. Why? I shut that memory down. Because I don't want it to interfere with them, so it's better that they listen to it on a tape but yet they don't have it in their head okay. because they don't want it to shift, change, change something. It gotcha, could actually gotcha. re-alter yeah. something in their life. And I think it was the so, fact that he didn't remember it that was really, really messing out. with him because he's watching himself talk and say yeah. all this stuff. He's like, I don't, I don't, that's not me. <laughs> and just think, if I can wipe somebody's memory kind of weird isn't it <laughs> and, and actually some of the cases i actually went back and found the names the dates and remember the one girl that said she lived out in salem in this uh -huh. big mansion where well, the guy was rich mm. so he owned and the railroads stopped. and she was that guy you and should she, have heard her in the, yeah she <laughs> was very <laughs> arrogant I, sm very I smoke cigars and they're from cuba <laughs> Oh, she yeah. goes, very I have, very, very I have many mistresses and all this but and then she goes on and she says the name the full name. So I actually tracked the guy. He, he did live in by Salem in a big house, Nancy, mansion. Wow. So oh, I actually yeah. found the house, and he owned stock in the railroad and everything. Yeah. I actually tracked everything that she said. Mm -hmm. It was all real. So pretty so this, cool. This is your only book so far? Only so far, yeah. We want to do the uh, past regression past and future. Past life regression and past the future. Life, yeah, with Lorna. So I got I to gotta write that. But. Okay. Ghosts are real, proof of the paranormal. 
You're Peter Canellis. Peter Canellis. And this is can be found on Amazon? Amazon, yep. Okay. And is there any other place online that people can... No, it's just Amazon. Do you, you have a Ghost Hunters of the Finger Lakes uh, Facebook? Yeah, yeah, you can get us on Facebook, yep. Okay. But that basically tells about us growing up, my grandmother being gifted, and yeah. her telling us crazy stories and just things, premonitions. There's a lot of stuff in There's there. There's a lot of stuff in it. It goes... It goes even to hospice when my dad experienced things yeah. that he was seeing his war buddies. I kind of touched on a lot of things. And it's so. an easy read, so, you know, it's not mm. intimidating at all. No. And uh, so is, who's in Finger the Ghost Hunters of Finger Lakes now? It's kind of me right now. That's what I thought. Yeah, my mm. brother and sister don't. They're so busy. They're just yeah. doing their own thing. So uh, actually, Lorna. They're enjoying life. <laughs> yeah. Lorna helps me out on all the cases, especially ones that need cleansing or... Right. Anything right. negative or, mm -hmm. or, you know, anything that people need. Now, do you have an online uh, presence, Lorna? Uh, just my Facebook. Okay, and that's just under your name. Yeah, just under Lorna Reynolds. And okay. Well, I've got one for the house because uh, the house I call Chase Manor. Oh, okay. And uh, so, and we're open for paranormal investigations. and Nice, okay. And uh, I'm... Uh, Working on it. There's a lot of work still left to be done. You know, eventually people will be able to come and stay there overnight. And oh, okay. And things to that extent. So it's a really cool place. Definitely active. All people right. are looking to go there. Well, we are out of time. I thank both of you for coming over. Oh, we wow. totally enjoyed it. That's thank fun. you. Thanks. And hopefully, we'll do this podcast at your house next time. Absolutely. Sounds Absolutely. Like good deal. <laughs> I want to take a moment here to thank all of my Patreons. Without you, this show simply wouldn't be possible. And I want to give an extra special shout out for those of you pledging $10 or more. Allison Cook, Super Inframan, Eric Hervin, Tim, 100th Monkey Project, Ad Noctum, Patricia Gaiaquinta, Alex Whitcomb, Alfred Tuttle, American Rambler, Andy McNamara, Barbara Fisher, Beverly Williamson, Big Boy Limina, Cash, Charles Davis, Chris Ernst, Craig Sisternos, Craig Parmenter, David Moore, Denise Sarek, Diane B., Dominic O'Malley, Edu Camahort, MTK, Eric Citron, Eric Todd, J. Otto Bullet, James Lattimore, Joanna Rojas, John Bracken, Carla Mahoney, Kevin, Kevin Schreck, Christian L., Linz Jackson K., Luke Osborne, Stefan Javonisky, Jim and Sophie, Mark H. Brady, Matt in Delaware, Matthew Sproul, Maddie, Nagatha Christie, Patricia W., Ray Benedeno, Riker and Stark, Roger Gonzalez, Sam Sharon, Sedgder, Stone Wilderness, Tactical Therapist, Taylor Bell, 36 Dingo, Vincent Trewell, Walker, William Powell, William Lovelace, and Ren Collier. Thank you all so very, very much. I want to apologize for the sound quality on that one. I don't think it was necessarily terrible, but um, I wasn't able to reduce some of the background noise because certain voices, in this case Peter's, uh, it's hard to filter for some reason. Certain voice vocal tones just uh, make it almost impossible to filter out the background noise. Um, Lorna sounded fine, but Peter kept just, uh, dropping out when I ran the filtering controls, no matter what I did. So I left it, uh, pretty much as it was recorded. So it may not sound as clean as it normally does. So I apologize for that, but it was live in the studio. We were all in the same room and, uh, the air conditioner was going. So that was that slight hum you heard in the background, which I thought I'd be able to remove and normally could have. There is a Patreon segment for this. It's going to be a video Patreon segment as Alorna walked around my uh, property and my house and told me what, sh what, impress uh, what impressions she was getting of different stuff. Some of it was pretty interesting. So that'll be up for Patreons later this week. And if you want to become a patron, go to wheredidtheroadgo.com. It's only $3 a month. You get extra content almost every week, sometimes more, and uh, the occasional uh, special treat here and there. All right, that's it for this week. I will see you next time. You have been listening to Where Did the Road Go? This show is made possible in part from our Patreons, and we thank you and everyone listening for helping us continue this exploration of the strange. 
You can always find everything Where Did the Road Go related at www.wheredidtheroadgo.com. And thank you so much for your support. <laughs>